Okay, um, I want to quickly work through some of the translation from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Now, I know that this is challenging, and I really appreciate all of y'all making a, making a good faith effort in doing this. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. If you were able to get most of this without having to look up anything in an English translation or use other internet resources or anything along, along those lines, but with the information that I gave you about some of the vocabulary that you won't have, if you were able to get a good translation out of these few verses, you are well on your way to doing well in Greek readings with either Dr. Black or Dr. Oster next semester. And that's really my goal for this semester, is to make sure that you are able to excel, uh, not just in this class, but to be um, able to excel in Greek readings and then eventually on into advanced exegesis with Dr. Black. So, uh, starting out here in Matthew chapter 2, uh, what I'm using right now is my uh, Bible software Accordance. You can see up here that I've got Accordance running. I've got a couple of different tabs open. This is my New Testament uh, Greek study tab. So I've got uh, my Greek New Testament here. In this box I have um, the InterVarsity Press New Testament Background Commentary 2nd Edition authored by Dr. Craig Keener with whom I am taking a class this semester. Um, this provides just background information. For example, um, you know, Herod is mentioned here. You can see it highlighted in blue. Herod is mentioned here in verse 1. And so Dr. Keener gives a little bit of uh, information about Herod the Great and um, also uh, Magi, uh, the Magoi here, the Magi, are mentioned, and so he tells a little bit more about them. And so this is actually a great resource that I recommend you get for uh, your personal studies. It will really, um, really help you out with classwork uh, or teaching class at school and give you some good uh, base for any exegetical paper that you need to use. I've got my own personal notes down here, um, you know, some things that I have noticed and taken. And then I've got the um, Greek New Testament textual apparatus down here. So if there are textual variants or anything along those lines, you know, um, when you follow my cursor up here, uh, this symbol indicates a particular textual variant. So does this uh, symbol. It looks like a degree symbol. Uh, this funny looking bracket. Um, anyway, you'll all learn how to work with that stuff later on. But Let's start out with um, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, I'll read some of this, and then we can keep going. So, Tude Yesu Genethentos en Bethlehem tes Yudai as in Hemeras Herodu tu Basileos edu magoi apo anatolon par egeneto es herosoluma. So, I'll stop there, even though it's in the middle of a sentence. Um... Suddenly, at the very beginning, right here, this whole clause, we have um, this weird, unexpected string of genitives uh, at the very beginning of the sentence. Uh, and so this should tip you off that we've got a genitive absolute here, and that's precisely what's going on. So um, as you can see, this is um, an aorist passive participle, asking a singular genitive. And it is, um, you can see down here at the bottom of the screen, where it says genethentos, and then it has a lexical form, genao, uh, and it says verb, heirs, passive, participle, masculine, singular, genitive, to be father of, to bear, beget, engender. Uh, that's just some basic information about this uh, particular word. So if I didn't know what it meant, I could look down there and get these instant details. But um, this genitive absolute here, uh, like, it's some, you can translate it as something along the lines of, and after Jesus was born, or Jesus having been born, something like that. So, um, but and after Jesus uh, was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in literally in days of Herod the king, uh, but that is really stilted. So in the days of Herod the king, behold, a word you learned in chapter thirteen, behold. Uh, magi, um, wise man, you can see over here Dr. Keener says that magi, uh, wise man is actually a bad translation of magi. These really were astrologers. 
um, that may sound strange to you that uh, pagan astrologers would come looking for the Jewish Messiah. Stranger things have happened in the history of the world, so don't worry about it. But uh, these magi, they are basically astrologers um, or magicians, hence our word magician. Magi came from uh, the east, ar arrived in Jerusalem. Arrived in Jerusalem, or appeared, uh, or came to Jerusalem. Legontas puestin hot tekthes basilus ton judaion. Saying, so this is a present active participle masculine plural nominative, it, um, that the antecedent, uh, the subject that goes with this participle is the magi, which is masculine plural nominative. So, um, naturally our participle is also masculine plural nominative. Pu estin, where is? So, pu is an interrogative particle, not participle, but particle, an interrogative word that you learned in chapter 13. Pu estin ho tek theis. With tek theis, you recognize, even if you don't recognize this verb, you or this stem here, you do recognize that this is an aorist passive participle masculine singular non nominative based on, based on the green section here, that theis ending. Um, tek theis comes from this verb. You can see down here in the bottom left corner, tick toe. Um, not tic tac toe, but tic toe, which is uh, a verb to bear children, to to uh, to give birth. A uh, similar uh, kind of word, uh, a synonym, really, in some ways, to ganao. So, where is the one having been born, or the one born, king of the Jews? Udayam. Uh For we. Saw. So with this verb, you're looking for an object in the accusative case, the thing that they saw. Um, out to does not fit that, so we need to keep moving down the sentence. For we saw ton astera. So we saw the star of him, or we saw his star in the east. In te anatole, kai elthomen. Proskunesai alto. And we came, this is a second aorist active indicative, first plural, and we came to worship. Aorist active infinitive of proskuneo, to worship him. And so moving along, akusas, you should recognize this from akuo, that sas ending, you can see that as an uh, aorist active uh, participle masculine singular nominative. Akusas de ho basilus herodes etarakthe kai pasa. Hero Soloma met Altu. So, after hearing, uh, and, and something like this, or after hearing the report, or after hearing the Magi, uh, something along those is implied. After hearing, the King Herod was troubled. Aorist passive indicative third singular of Tarasso, a Tarakthe, and all Jerusalem with him. Pasahero Soloma met Autu, and all Jerusalem with him. And, moving on to verse 4, Kai Sunagogon, Pantas tus Archeires, Kai Grammates tu Lau, Epun Thanito, Par Auton, Puho Christos, Genetai. So, and, after gathering together, all the chief priests or high priests and scribes of the people, he inquired from them where, so again, and that interrogative, interrogative particle that you learned in chapter 13, where, just like up here, where the Messiah is born, is begotten. So recognize this. Don't be uh, don't be con don't confuse this with um, sunagon, which would be a present active participle. Uh, you recognize that. Um, remember that participles do not have augments. And ago or ago and forms of ago, compound forms of ago like sunago and apago and other verbs like that. Um, they 
still have this uh, second arist stem kind of buried here in the middle. Um, you see that, and I'll clear this out. So in this green section right here, you see that agag. Uh, well, that's that's a holdover from the second arist active indicative, uh, agag, as in agagon, um, agages, agage, that uh, second arist active indicative um, in a uh, stem there. So uh, even though the augment, that eta augment, is gone, you have here this, um, you still have this um, this weird second arist form. And so this is, as you can see down here in the bottom left corner, aristactic participle masculine singular nominative. So Herod is a subject of this participle, uh, the subject from way down here. So he was the one who gathered together all the high priests, all the chief priests, and the scribes of the people. Uh, so they were not... The sentence doesn't say they were gathered together. It is saying that Herod, after he had gathered them together, uh, inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So here's a peculiarity of Greek here. This hoi, this masculine plural nominative article, hoi refers back to these guys, the archeres and the grammates, the chief priests, the high priests, and the scribes. But there's no, there's no obvious subject in this sentence. It's just hoi de apon alto. Well, the subject is implied. The subject is implied, and in Greek can do that. So hoi de apon alto. Basically, you could translate this, and they said to him, in Bethlehem Tes Judas in Bethlehem of Judea Judea Hutos Gar Gegreptai Diatu Prophetu for thus it has been written through the prophet. And here's this quote from Septuagint. This is um, another advantage of having uh, this kind of uh, setup that I have here is that uh, I can tell because this is in italics, I can tell that this is a quote from the Septuagint. And um, if I don't happen to know what verse it is, Dr. Keener's background commentary over here has this set up with set up for me. So I can highlight, I can move my cursor over Micah 5.2, and down here in the bottom left corner, it gives me, um, from, a, from whichever particular text I tell it to, it gives me that verse. So that's actually pretty handy. Um, and then so it can do the same thing in the New Testament as well. So th these are references to uh, Jesus' uh, execution. So, Kaisu uh, Bethlehem, Ge Yuda, and you Bethlehem, land of Judah. Uh, you can see that it's, this is parsed masculine singular genitive. Um, this form has not declined very much. Um, what that means is, is that um, it will it will not have you know your normal os u o own endings like um, you know like a second declension noun or something along those lines. And so this a doesn't look like a genitive ending, um, but, but it is. Just uh, just trust me there. Uh, by no means uh, least are you among the rulers of Judah, or by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah. Uh, ek sugar ex elucentai hegumenos. Uh, for from you will come one ruling. This is a participle that menos ending should tip you off to that. Who will shepherd... This is a f uh, this is a form of the future tense that you haven't gotten to, um, so don't worry about why this looks like a present tense. Um, <clears throat> for uh, or who will shepherd ton laon mu ton Yisrael, um, my people, Israel. This is a, you would not say who will shepherd the people of me, the Israel. The, um, Greek is particular about where it puts articles in front of names. As you noticed at the beginning here, um, you would not say the Jesus. 
I tutored a guy in Greek uh, several years ago when I was a graduate student at Harding in Searcy, and he always thought it was funny to say the Jesus. Um, I didn't think it was as funny as he did, but <laughs> anyway. Um, so, who will shepherd my people, Israel? This phrase here is giving further explanation to this phrase. And so, uh, this is said to be in apposition, not opposition, but apposition, A-P-P-O-S-I-T-O-N, in apposition, uh, meaning it is further explaining this over here. So I think that that gives you a pretty good idea of some things. I can do the next few verses uh, and upload those later on if you want, but uh, right now I think that that gets you well on your way, so thanks very much.